All right, guys, on the bench, we have a Cobra 29 XLR and a Pry 250 amplifier, uh, linear, whatever you want to call them. Heaters, foot warmers. We all know what that does. But there's a story behind um, this Cobra 29 XLR. Normally, I wouldn't be doing a video on this, but um, the story behind this is, uh, so the gentleman who owns this is Nikki from New York. And uh, when we spoke on the phone, he said that this was a um, the personal radio of a person named Jake, um, who had a, I guess, a very popular um, CB shop in New York. Now, I've never heard of him, but according to um, the owner of the radio, uh, I guess he was world-renowned. Um, everybody brought his radios Everybody brought their radios to him, and um, he did an incredible job tuning, peaking, you know, doing all that stuff. And he wanted to kind of preserve um, the tune on, on this particular radio. And he said he belonged to a club, and, you know, everybody had CBs, and they'd get together every once in a while, and, you know, kind of showcase what they had, and, you know, kind of hang out and, you know, do their thing. And um, while I've never heard of Jake or... This um, this shop in New York, I've heard of shops in New York, but I've never heard of this guy Jake. Maybe you guys can confirm um, who this guy Jake is. But I had to tell um, Nikki that, you know, once you reach a certain age, um, well, his main concern was he was going to lose the tune that Jake originally put in here. And I had to tell him that, you know, after a certain amount of time, these things fall out of alignment and they need to be retuned anyway. And that, you know, chances are this is going to need to be recapped. And, you know, when you do that, it's going to be out of alignment. And it's going to need alignment anyway. So I assured him that, you know, um, I was going to uh, do my best to um, get peak performance out of both the radio and the linear. Um, he wasn't sure if, uh, the amplifier worked, he's hoping it does, and, um, I guess he had plugged this in, and, uh, everything was kind of dim, according to what he said, um, and that it did receive, but he wasn't sure if it, um, transmitted. So we're gonna go through both of these, we're gonna, uh, open them up, see what's inside of this, I'm assuming this is a two-pill, as they say. And, um, yeah, kind of just, uh, see what we have here. So, um, he assured me that this was not going to be used, um, on air. So, uh, with that out of the way, uh, I'm not going to be transmitting on air either. This is going to go right to a dummy load. So, and, uh, yeah, so we have, um, just a ba basic amp. For 12 to 80 meter only. Of course, this isn't going to be used on 11 meter. Of course, it's not. And uh, yeah, so uh, why don't we uh, open this linear up first and uh, see what's going on in there? All right, let me get this cracked open. All right, that was easy enough. Two screws, took off the top cover, and um, yeah, what we have here is just a standard two pill. Uh, nothing crazy. Um, I think with the 4 watt dead key, I don't think we'll see um, 250 um, watts out of this. But um, probably get close. But, you know, what we have here is just, uh, yeah, two pills. So we have a SD1446 uh, transistor, two of those. Um, it's a well made unit. Um, you know, you can uh, kind of tell the quality that went into this. Um, you know, nice solder joints. Um, you know, nothing crazy, but, you know, looks good. These were really popular when I looked, because I've never heard of this uh, company, this Pride 250. Um, you know, when these were popular, I was, you know, just a teenager. Um, but uh, they were super popular, I guess, in the 80s. And... Um, you know, um, um, but I couldn't find much info on it as far as specs, um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's nothing crazy here, so, 
Uh, we'll have to see if it works. So we have one, two, three electrolytics that uh, that I'll change out. Those look like they're all radial mounts, but um, I don't normally stock radial mount um, capacitors, but I'm sure we can fit uh, just a regular electrolytic in there. Should be no problem. But um, everything looks okay inside here. Nothing looks burnt up or trashed in any way. So I'm hopeful that this is going to work. And um, yeah, so uh, here we go. There's that. Let's move on to the radio. Let's see what's going on with the uh, with the CB itself. All right, so I got this radio open. And sure enough, we can see here that there was a that there is a channel mod um, installed um, 40 high 40 low and uh, yeah in place of the uh, Delta tune Delta tunes kind of useless on these radios anyway and if I was to install a channel mod on this I'd probably put it on the Delta tune as well but I got this plugged into a uh, external speaker and I'm not hearing anything um, I haven't done a uh, sensitivity test on it yet or even know if it receives but um, all right, we got meter movement, audio, 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 I'm not getting anything, so it is not transmitting, but, uh, oh, oh, so we have, what do we have here, oh, we have a missing screw here. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I'm flexing the board and I can hear the external speaker. So I don't know if I think somebody purposely left the screw out of here. So this obviously has some sort of bad solder joint in this area here somewhere. We'll have, to, we'll have to go through that. Get this uh, get this meter fixed as well. Yeah. I guess the meter is the least of the problems right now, but audio. Let's see if I. Can't even get a carrier, so. But all right, well, I gotta find out what's going on with this first, and then um, I'll end up recapping this. And um, I don't know, I might have to just kind of reflow some of these solder uh, points here. I'll put this under a. Uh, microscope and see if I see any cracks or whatever and uh, yeah so fix one thing at a time let me see if I can get this uh, this um, broken um, this broken trace or whatever it is uh, fixed first and then I'll go ahead and recap this I'll keep you guys updated so when I took the knobs off to um, get them cleaned up in my uh, ultrasonic cleaner the uh, face plate came off so it was just basically being held in place um, by the uh, by the knobs but I'd like to also swap out some of these um, pots because they they're a little loose and um, I think I gotta go look in my collection here, but I think I have a XLR uh, parts chassis that I can uh, swap over some better parts. Um, well, that's the channel mod, but yeah, some of these parts are really loose. Um, rather than just trying to clean them up, I'm thinking I'm gonna swap them out with better ones. And uh, I think I have a. If I have a whole parts chassis, I'll end up probably swapping out. The, uh, the whole bezel and the face plate and uh, clean up these switches and put them back in um, 
and I think I have some better better cases than this. This yeah, this one's got a couple of holes in it with some electric tape and whatnot. It looks like somebody did a pretty crappy job spray painting it. So I think I have some better cases. I'll uh, I'll go look at my collection here and um yeah go through this um um try to figure out what's going on with this uh this board here that's um when i flex it it goes uh, in and out of uh receive but uh yeah so let me go uh look at all the flux on the bottom of this board jeez all right so let me get at this um see if i can get this uh whatever solder joint that's broken or whatever fixed I'll get this uh, front bezel off. Uh, I'll go look for a, um, a parts chassis, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, guys. It's been a few days since I've been on the bench. Been fighting off a cold, but um, got some some stuff done here. So we'll pick it up where we left off with the radio. I got it warming up, so I figured while I get that warming up, I'll take a closer look at this uh, linear. But uh, I did have a parts chassis, so I was able to uh, get a uh, a better, not new, but better um, bezel on here with a better face plate and uh, some better cases. I got this covered so that way it can get warm, but got it all recapped. Um, it's working good now. I fixed the, um, there was a couple of bad solder joints uh, where that screw was uh, not screwed into. So I reflowed a lot of those, um, a lot of the solder joints there that were bad. And then I uh, put a screw back in the board, in the chassis, and um, sure enough, uh, we have transmit and receive. Um, so yeah, so I got uh, all the pots clean, switches clean with deoxid, um, cleaned it all up as best as I could. Um, I put some new thermal paste on the driver and final, uh, repaired the, uh, the power jack in the back that was cracked. So, uh, and I figured I'd put the old knobs back on because, uh, they had painted the, the insides, uh, the circles there are painted, uh, black. So I don't know if that guy Jake did it or whatnot. So I decided to keep those in, got the meter working and put a uh, super bright white LED in there instead of the incandescent. And, uh, yeah, so we're back in business. So now it just needs an alignment. And uh, this has got to be one of the easiest alignments I've ever seen on a uh, radio. It's legit just uh, uh, like a page and three quarters of uh, alignment. So uh, should be easy enough to do. You know, easy synthesizer alignment. The receive align is pretty basic. Um, as well as the transmitter line, so yeah, we'll get through that. So now the linear here <clears throat> looks like it's in really good shape. Nothing looks burnt. Um, transformers look okay. Um, you know, relays working, everything's working. So solder joints look great. And uh, yeah, so the only thing I'm gonna do is um, there's three capacitors in here. So there's one there, one there on that switch, and then one there in the back. So, easy enough to swap out. So, uh, like I said, I don't really do much with these. Um, I'm familiar with them. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on them. You know, there's lots of uh, other people out there that can probably tell you the ins and outs of linears. Um, but... As far as I can tell, this, this linear is in really good shape. None of the solder joints look, uh, you know, fatigued and nothing. So I'm assuming at some point somebody had worked on this because I think these power cables are upgraded. Um, so, yeah, let me, uh, let me get these three electrolytics. Uh, I might upgrade some of the capacitance, too, on some of these. Uh, let me get these three electrolytics swapped out. I'm going to do a, uh, an alignment on this radio, and then we're going to put it on the uh, MFJ watt meter here and see what we're doing. Uh, so we'll do it uh, barefoot, and then we'll do it uh, high power, low power, 
And uh, so seeing as this radio does not have sideband, we will not be doing sidebands on uh, the linear. And uh, so, you know, it's not going to be an on-air test. So this is going to go right to the dummy load. So we shouldn't have any legality issues or whatever. Uh, you know, I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but still, it's got to be said. All right, let me get to it. All right, so I got these three electrolytics swapped out. Uh, these were all radial mounts, which I don't stock radial mounts. Uh, and in this case, uh, I didn't think it was necessary to replace them with radial mounts. Uh, <clears throat> so what I did was, I just put some wire sheathing. You strip out a piece of wire, keep the sheathing, and you can slide it over the leads. Um, this was the only one I was kind of concerned with. So um, I just made sure that those long leads were, um, you know, covered um, but other than that, the other three uh, electrolytics went in fine. So that one is one, is two, and then the third one is right there, three. And uh, we're good to go now. So uh, I think the radio's warmed up enough now where I can uh, start aligning this thing. And then uh, I'll put everything together, put the covers back on this, put the covers back on that and um we'll see what we're doing so when i originally talked to um to uh nick nicky um he said that he was running a seven watt dead key through this and he was 100 percent sure he was doing that um i i didn't agree with him there uh, i told him that it should be more like two uh two watts dead key um you know, with, uh, you know, not, not a lot of swing, because uh, you got to worry about that, too, you know, it's not just the dead key, but, you know, what you're swinging, um, so I convinced them that, you know, we were going to go just leave the radio at a stock four watts, and, um, you know, we're going to do it that way, I, you know, when I told them, I said, don't sit there and have whole conversations while you keyed up, you know, uh, short sentences, let the thing cool off, uh, you know, and you'll be fine. You know, this isn't, um, you know, this isn't anything crazy. You know, it's just a two pill. So, um, yeah, so let me, uh, let me get this covered, aligned, and then we'll see what we're doing barefoot. We'll see what we're doing, uh, on high power and low power AM only, because this is an AM only radio. All right, guys, stand by. All right, guys, got the radio aligned. Uh, probably one of the easiest alignments I've ever had to do on, um, any, uh, Cobra 29 uh, modulations adjusted. Uh, it was a little off, uh, a little, little too, uh, too much uh, modulation. So we got that back down to 100% with the uh, oscilloscope. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so something I wanted to point out was this whole 54 megahertz trap. So when you go to the uh, transmit alignment procedure on this radio and pretty much any radio. You're going to have a procedure, adjust for minimum at 54 megahertz. So we're going to adjust L10 uh, for the minimum, uh, basically display on the spectrum analyzer. So what I want to point out is, without a spectrum analyzer, you can't do this uh, step. Uh, you're going to be lost um, if you don't at least, <clears throat> if you don't have a spectrum analyzer. So L10 on this particular radio is back here. And it's normally filled with wax. So, again, if you don't have a spectrum analyzer, don't even bother digging that adjustment out. Just leave the wax in there. Um, this is one of the few things that I will fill back up with wax after I'm done adjusting it. Just in case, uh, you know, somebody wants to come in after. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just the safety, I guess. Um, I don't normally put wax back into stuff. But that is something once I'm done adjusting, I do put the wax back in. So without a spectrum analyzer, don't even bother doing that step. Leave it alone. Chances are it's on point anyway. Um, so, yeah, just leave it. But if you have one, it doesn't hurt to hook it up and check it. So I have my, uh, <clears throat> my uh, RF sampler connected here. Obviously from the back of the radio. And uh, it's going up to my spectrum analyzer. So what we're going to do is we're going to key up at the 27 megahertz mark. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry guys, my voice 
We're gonna key up. There we go. Oh. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna swing over to the 54 mark keyed up we can see that it's pretty pretty clean floor all the way up to 54 megahertz and there's the 54 megahertz so now when they say adjust for minimum basically under display uh, this peak you adjust that L10 as far down as it'll go <clears throat> now this is attenuated 30 dB um, so, yeah, so now, we go back, that's what you're going to be adjusting for when you adjust that. So this spectrum analyzer, it's just a basic plain Jane spectrum analyzer, nothing crazy. Um, you know, it does, this is the only thing I use it for basically, you know, and just checking to see, you know, uh, how clean the, uh, the signal is. But, uh, yeah, most of the time I'm using this just for, uh, just for that 54 megahertz adjustment. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So that's all I wanted to show you guys as far as that step goes. And, uh, you know, adjusting it. So we can see the radio is nice and clean all the way out to 54 megahertz. Um, so now, uh, let's get this, uh, we'll get the linear plugged in. Uh, so yeah, this is set to 4 watts. It's a 4 watt. Or what dead key um, something I also did with with the uh, I cut back on the um, <clears throat> the channel mod because uh, the less wire you have in there the better so uh, something else I did so this radio is good to go um, it's back to factory specs um, and uh, yeah so let's uh, so we got a four watt carry let's see what it's swinging actually audio Audio, 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 audio. Just around what, like 15, 16. So I think this is a good, uh, it's a good uh, setup for this uh, this linear. You know, nothing, nothing crazy. So, all right, let's. Uh, <clears throat> now we know what the uh, stock radio uh, is, dead keying and swinging. Let's get the uh, this linear plugged in and uh, have a little fun. All right, we got the Pride 250 hooked up linear. So we have it on <clears throat> low power AM. And uh, it's basically it for this uh, this particular setup. Um, so let's see what we're doing. Dead key. This is on low. We have what? Uh, about 25. Audio. Audio. Audio, audio, swinging over to 100, it's on low, put it on high, dead key at 50, audio, 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 just under 200, so... I'd say that's good. So uh, that's it. So now, you know, I'm not a fan of the the preamp because it's it's going to amplify the static as well. I mean, you can hear. I don't know if you guys can hear the difference, but it will amplify uh, weaker signals, but it's also going to amplify the static. I don't know if the uh, the juice is worth the squeeze as they say but um it's there so it's, it's an option i guess if you if you want to use that but like i told nick i said well these are great um the antenna is probably going to be more important as far as uh overall performance um so he's, he's aware that he's going to need a good antenna as well as this linear you know in order to you know not only just 
send out, but you know, you want to receive as well, you know, uh, so it's, uh, I told him the antenna was going to be just as important as getting, um, you know, this linear straightened, so he's aware of that, I'm sure he's going to be happy, um, you know, these Cobra 29 XLRs, they're really not, I guess they're not the desirable, uh, model of the, you know, the 29, but again, you know, this, this has sentimental value to, uh, to them so it was worth putting the money into and that's what I tell all my customers you know you might have the crappiest radio but you know maybe it belongs to your grandfather or your, your father or whoever and uh, you know you just want it working again you know sometimes it's just the memories so you know for him it was the same you know this this belongs to a uh, to a famous uh, CB tech and um, you know uh, at the end of the day it's a you know just a 29 XLR but to him it means a little bit more so it is what it is. Um, so I guess one final thing we'll do is we'll do a sensitivity test on this uh, radio, see how well its ears are. So uh, let me get this uh, amp disconnected. I'll get rid of this power supply, and um, we'll get this hooked up to the Synod meter and see uh, see what sensitivity, uh, how good the sensitivity is on this. Um, all right, let me get that straightened away. All right, let's see what we're doing for Synad. Test the sensitivity on this uh, Cobra 29 XLR. So I have external speaker plugged in. Goes all the way around. External speaker wire coming out of the back. Wire goes all the way up to the Synad meter. So let's see what we're doing for sensitivity. Let's get this 27.185. Channel 19. Sorry for the beep, the tone. So we're at minus 100. Let's go minus 110. Okay. Minus 111, minus 112, minus 113, one fourteen, one fifteen, one just about minus one sixteen. Volume max. Just about minus 116 dBm of sensitivity. Oh, I'm sorry, 12 dB uh, sent out. So, um, that's pretty damn good for a uh, Cobra 29 XLR, I'd say. So, alignment was on point. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I thought it was, uh, something, uh, pretty cool to show off. And, uh, so Nick, your, uh, your radio's all done. Your linear's all set up. It's recapped. You have your, uh, 40 low, 40 high still. Uh, so you can mess around with that. Um, I already told you because uh, he's going to be running a uh, D104 uh, mic uh, handheld. So I told him to, uh, because, you know, it's also an amplified mic, try to keep the Dyna mic on the actual unit itself maybe halfway or possibly less, depending on how you have the mic uh, amplified. So, uh, yeah, you're going to have to play around with that I mean these work fine you know we're just a standard uh, mic but that's what uh, that's what Nicky wants and and uh, I'm sure he'll uh, do just fine with it so hope you guys enjoyed Nick good luck with your radio and your uh, linear